Now, the entire team at Chamber is led very ably uh, by our president. So will you please welcome Jennifer Carnegie. Thanks very much, Murray. Your Excellency, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Chamber lunch. It's lovely to see another packed house. We've got a slightly different guest list today, which is fantastic for us. There's some companies that have come along that, that don't normally have a corporate table. So for those of you that have never been to a Chamber event before, you're very, very welcome. Hopefully what we do today will whet your appetite to come to some more. We run them pretty much every month. In fact, this month we have two, and Murray will tell you all about that later. For those of you that are regular attenders, it's fantastic to see you. So, so welcome. When we met for lunch last month, we had no inkling of the dire situation we would be in now in terms of European security. These events in Ukraine are arguably the biggest in Europe since the fall of the Berlin Wall, even more so than the Balkans War of the 1990s. This reminds us how fortunate we are in Jersey in comparison with the Ukrainian, Ukrainian people who are being terrified by Russian brutality under the utterly trumped up and false premise of special military operations to liberate them. Liberate them from what? From democratic and economic freedom and the chance to build an independent and flourishing society in which to bring up their families in a stable and secure country. Almost precisely what we wish for ourselves in Jersey and an ideal the chamber wholeheartedly supports. These are grim times. Putin's liberation of Ukraine is clearly totalitarian oppression. We must salute the courage of, Ukra of the Ukrainian people as they fight back against Russian tyranny and indiscriminate violence against women and children fleeing for their lives. I've spoken often about the tendency for governments to allow critical issues to drag on because it's never an easy time for them to make hard decisions. What we're seeing in Ukraine is a consequence of a lack of political leadership by the West. And it's what has left the UK and most other European nations with inadequate military capability to deter Putin's mendacity. Additionally, we have a self-induced energy crisis directly linked to our inability to drive for self-sufficiency and a desire to appease popular opinion when the warning signs were already apparent 10 years ago. So, we've had a wake-up call, which beckons some major strategic reappraisals of our approaches to deterrence and energy, and not to mention immigration, as the biggest forced migrant flow, flows since World War II are now underway. How did we get to the point where, just as we're attempting to claw our way back from the impact of COVID, we have another largely self-induced humanitarian and economic disaster to manage, which is affecting what's in our pockets now, as well as detracting from economic prospects in the longer term. In recent years, whilst Putin and other autocrats have been testing Western resolve, our complacency and apathy has encouraged them to believe that we are so obsessed with our own decadence and progressive values that the door would be open for them to pursue their own agendas. Whilst they were probing our resistance to their expansionist ambitions, we were debating the merits of gender neutral toilets and a range of other indulgent societal nuances, like removing the words strength and grip from the lexicon of the British military for fear of causing offense. Don't get me wrong, I think these issues should be debated and I welcome the debate, but not to the extent that we're enslaved by it. In our desperation to pander to the individual, we have lost sight of the, the power of the democratic whole. What the horrendous situation in Ukraine is teaching us is that perhaps the pendulum of progressive values has swung too far and it's time to wake up and recognize how fragile freedom really is. Perhaps it's far better to fight for the freedom to protest than fight against the system that allows the protests to happen. There is, however, cause for hope. After bickering for years, the European Union and NATO have aligned their views within a week. We've recognized that focusing on a more sustainable energy strategy is doable, after all, and even though it will take some time. 
President Zelensky has shown that a politician can unify and galvanize a country through clarity of intent and personal example. And he's shown that you can inspire the world through an ability to communicate. With everything I have said, we must not forget that the democracy we live in is a powerful system and one which depends on free trade and open borders for commerce. It gives us the ability to pull the best from everyone rather than being forced into following the tendencies of an entitled few. But just because we live in a democracy, we shouldn't kid ourselves that we're using it to maximum effect. It's been well researched and documented that diversity of thought, experience and belief is known to increase resilience, quality of decision making and organisational capability and yet we don't take full advantage of it. We're fortunate today to welcome Kate Wright as our guest speaker to talk to us about the very topic of diversity and inclusion. By involving everybody together and respecting one another equally, we can get the very best ideas from their diversity of backgrounds and frames of reference. These are key responsibilities for business leaders who must set the inclusive conditions for diverse thinking by ensuring it's easier for people who may be outliers or introverts to get their points across and contribute. The very opposite of Putin's approach to the people of Ukraine. As an independent organization, events such as this lunch at the Chamber of Commerce are only possible because of the generosity of our sponsors. We'd like to say an enormous thank you today to Morantz, one of the, the leading law firms in Jersey, who have over 60 years experience in the financial services sector. Um, Morantz advise on the laws of the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Guernsey and Jersey, and provide specialist entity management, governance, regulatory and consulting services. To tell us more about Moron, I would like to welcome Daniel Burkwistle, partner and inclusion leader uh, up here to the stage, based here in Jersey. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, you'll be pleased to hear I'm not about to give you a tutorial on law. Uh, my close colleagues will be particularly relieved to hear that. Um, but I did just want to give you a few words from your sponsor. Um, <clears throat> so thank you very much, firstly, for everyone coming and joining us today. We really genuinely very pleased to be the sponsor today, and I think especially given the focus of today's discussions uh, and following yesterday's celebration of International Women's Day, a day now marked, of course, annually to celebrate women's achievement, to raise awareness against bias and to take action uh, for equality. So at Moron, we believe in creating an inclusive workplace for our people, and we know that diversity of thought and perspectives will ensure that we provide the best possible service to our clients. Uh, but I'm really proud to be a member of our inclusion steering group. And since becoming involved in that group, I've learned a lot about why it's important for inclusion to be a priority for organizations like ours. And I've learned about the part that I have to play in ensuring ours is an inclusive workplace where people feel they belong and they can fulfill their potential. And learning about and understanding the part I can play in inclusion hasn't always been immediately obvious to me. It hasn't always been comfortable to talk about. I've had to make conscious effort to consider my privilege and to understand what that means from an inclusion perspective, the advantages it may have given me throughout my life and how I can now use it to be an active ally to underrepresented and marginalized groups in our workplace. And when I talk about privilege, uh, I'm talking, for example, about the fact that I'm a white, non-disabled, heterosexual man from a middle-class background. I went to fee-paying school. It's important for all of us to stop and consider our privilege. You know, we, we may not realize we have it. And there's power, I think, in acknowledging it and in helping uh, by using it to make meaningful change in our workplaces. One of, the, one of our goals at Murat is to have an authentically diverse and inclusive workforce at all levels, which includes having diverse representation across our leadership and including specifically gender diversity. I think we all have a responsibility and a role to play in putting an inclusion lens on the language we use the behaviours we exhibit, and the decisions we make. And I'm really pleased that Kate is going to help us to understand some practical steps we can all take uh, on that front after leaving this room today. So remember, inclusion doesn't just happen. It takes purposeful action, and I think we really can all play a part in that. So thanks again, and enjoy the lunch.